Hi everyone, welcome to Being Patient Brain Talks. I'm Deborah Khan, founder of Being Patient. We're, as we delve into research, um, possible cures for Alzheimer's disease, we thought today we would focus on stem cell therapy um, and figure out where research is at. Is it promising for a cure um, for the future? So joining me today, um, we're very pleased to have Professor Jack Price. He is um, from King's College and joins us from um, the UK. Sorry, I'm just going to bring you up. Um, give me Hi. Hi, Professor. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> so let's just start, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people uh, who are, are watching right now might not necessarily have, have probably heard of stem cell therapy, but don't actually know what it is. So can you just um, start by describing to us um, and informing us of what is stem cell therapy? Well, by and large, it's the transplantation of stem cells. And immediately to say there are lots of different types of stem cells, but it's the transplantation of stem cells uh, either directly into the brain or uh, in a way that gives them access to the brain or an influencer of the brain um, as, as a way to bring about a therapeutic effect for neurodegeneration or, or whatever. So do we have stem cells all over our body or are these stem cells in the brain that we're talking about? Where are stem cells? Good question. Well, actually, for many years, neuroscientists didn't think there were stem cells in the brain. Uh, we now know they are. Um, we know particularly about a population that's become very uh, important in our understanding of Alzheimer's disease and in, uh, and in some mood disorders like uh, anxiety and depression. Um, and these are stem cells that are found in, in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. Uh, for the cognoscenti amongst you, it's a dentate gyrus as part of the hippocampus. Uh, so we now know they exist in the brain, but by and large, the brain doesn't have stem cells, unlike uh, skin, unlike uh, some other tissues in the body. The blood, I suppose, is the classic. I mean, you'll probably all be aware that there's a population of stem cells in the bone marrow that regenerates blood all the time. Well, we don't have anything like that for the brain. But for the hippocampus, there is this very small population of cells. That, so why, what makes stem cells so special? Why are they a focus of research? Well, the, the, the really key uh, feature of stem cells is, in fact, the definition of stem cells really is, is it's a population of cells that can give rise to other types of cells. So in, in neural stem cells, what we're talking about is, is precursor cells that can make adult brain cells that so can make nerve cells, can make glial cells, all the different cell types that make up the brain. And so the hypothesis is quite simply, if you have a disease like Alzheimer's or any other neurodegenerative disease, where we know the real key pathology is the loss of nerve cells. So nerve cells die. Your brain doesn't normally have the ability to replace those lost brain cells. That's the problem. So the idea was quite simply, if you put stem cells where the brain, where the loss of brain cells has taken place, maybe those stem cells would replace the lost cells. So, uh, we, we, so we discovered that we do indeed have stem cells in the hippocampus, the area that's responsible for memory. So the hypothesis is, is if you take some of those stem cells and put them in the hippocampus, it could possibly repair? Is that, is that fair to say? Well, that, that's true. That strategy, as you've just simply laid it out there, probably wouldn't work and hasn't really been tried in people, not precisely like that. Um, I mean, there are a couple of studies, but it, it, that, that, for a variety of reasons, wouldn't quite simply work. Um, problem number, number one is you can't very easily get a population of hippocampal stem cells. I mean, where are you gonna, gonna go for them? I mean, people aren't gonna donate them, <laughs> right? Um, uh, but now, and perhaps this is something we might wanna get onto, it is possible using something called um, IPS technology to, to make cells like that. And that's, that's an initiative that's now sort of underway. So is that like growing it in a Petri dish or something like that? Well, there's a piece of absolutely brilliant stem cell science that was done by a, a chap by the name of Shinya Yamanaka uh, in Kyoto in 2006. He published in 2006. And what that was was the following. He showed you could take 
any cell effectively. He started just with skin cells, but you can take blood, you can take uh, more or less any cell type you like. And through this very straightforward genetic manipulation that he discovered, you can turn them into what we call pluripotent stem cells, which quite simply are cells that can make any cell type in the body. Okay. They also have a, an ability that other stem cells generally don't have, and that's they can actually build tissue. If you grow them in a little culture dish, they can actually start to make little pieces of brain, things we call the organoids or cerebroids. Um, so this was a groundbreaking technology. And what people are doing now is using, is first off making iPS cells, there's now hundreds, thousands of lines available worldwide from you know, different individuals. And what you can do, and, and labs all over the world are doing, is working out how to turn them into whatever cell type you particularly want. Now, people are looking at Alzheimer's disease, um, but actually the two areas that, that your, uh, your, your viewers might be particularly interested in where the advance has been the greatest has been two degenerative disease uh, that, that they will be aware of. So one is Parkinson's disease, uh, where there's enormous progress um, and clinical trials are pretty much are, 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 uh, underway now there. And the other is age-related macular degeneration, which, again, your people, your colleagues will be aware is a disease of the eye, where you lose your, your, your retinal uh, photoreceptors, the, the light-sensing cells. And there are very, very clever strategies now where people are using uh, these pluripotent stem cells to make a thing called the retinal pigment epithelium. It lies behind the, the retina, but it's what supports the photoreceptors. And it turns out that's what goes wrong in, in age-related macular degeneration. So the, the, there's really good clinical trials going on in multiple different countries now, Japan, US, UK, uh, for both of those disorders, really quite advanced. Okay, so let's focus a little bit on Parkinson's because yeah. the, the um, so Parkinson's, as we were speaking um, about earlier, is easier than Alzheimer's because it's more targetable, right? Is that correct? Well, I think we know more about the pathology in, in Parkinson's disease. The pathology in Alzheimer's turns out to be really quite complex. And we've had over the years quite a few ideas about how it worked. Uh, but when it's turned into trying to turn those into actual therapies, it hasn't really quite quite worked as we expected. And, and we keep having to go back and rethink what, what's going on in Alzheimer's. So the pathology there is, is really quite difficult. Now, the pathology in Parkinson's disease is also difficult. It's not trivial. But at the same time, one thing's clear, and that is a lot of the movement disorder associated with Parkinson's. So you'll be aware that what happens in Parkinson's is people freeze. They can't initiate uh, voluntary movement. Um, a lot of that pathology is associated with the loss of a very particular population of nerve cells. So what we call the midbrain dopaminergic nerve cells. So those cells use dopamine as a neurotransmitter. And what we've worked out is that we can start with these pluripotent stem cells I was just telling you about and make them make precisely the right type of dopaminergic cell that we know is what is lost in Parkinson's disease. And I should say this is built on 30, 40 years of research, people trying to find exactly the right cell type to work in Parkinson's disease. They had some early success and it fell backwards. It didn't look like it worked as well as it should. But this technology looks really much more precise than everything anybody's ever tried before. And I say there are clinical trials now in, in several countries worldwide too early to be sure that it'll work, but if I had to put my money on anything, it would be on that. I think it's looking very, very likely. Is there is there any other type of brain disorder or um, disease that um, stem cell therapy is using is being used for today? Well, I think we have to separate into what I would call sort of legacy technologies. And then these newer technologies that are building on these pluripotent cells that I just described. So some of the le legacy technologies are, are things that I I've been involved in over the last few years where, where we, we didn't at that stage have these pluripotent cells I was just telling you about. So we were scrabbling around trying to find stem cells that would do the job. And we had some positives, some things look, look very promising. And some of those are in advanced clinical trials. And there are a lot of disorders that they've been looked at. So stroke, for example, Alzheimer's disease we've mentioned, 
uh, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, a whole series of neurodegenerative diseases. Um, it's too early to be absolutely sure, but I have to say that my enthusiasm for that is slightly tailed off. The, the, the data as they've come in from a number of different trials um, initially looked quite promising, but the more people that were treated when you, were, you did it carefully comparing with controls, you know, who, who hadn't received the cells, some of the results have been more disappointing. So, so my guess is that those legacy technologies will slightly fade from view over the next five or 10 years. I mean, I'm still hopeful, maybe some will come through, uh, but that's the way it's looking. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, it's, it's um, and, and stem cells, like as we were talking about earlier, I mean, the, the secret to stem cells is that they can, they can create new growth, right? I mean, they're, right. They, you, you put them in a place and you're going to see a regeneration. And um, so, when you talk about Alzheimer's, though, we're talking about neurodegeneration, you know, the neurons and the, the connections um, being lost. So is is I mean, is it crazy to think that actually um, you could regenerate some of that neuron loss in the brain if you were um, if hypothetically this did work? Yeah. So so in, in the, the, the dopamine neurons in Parkinson's that I was just talking about, that's exactly the strategy. So, so the idea is you take these cells, you, you don't start actually there with stem cells, you do differentiate them to, to, to move towards the dopaminergic cells you want. Then you place them very precisely in, in the target region of the brain. And sure enough, what it looks like happens is that they finally differentiate, they make these dopaminergic neurons and they connect. They connect with what would be their appropriate targets in the forebrain, uh, which is where, where we need them to act. So yes, that that that's a hypothesis. Now the the just to say that the, the these legacy therapies I was talking about probably don't work that way. They they have a different effect that we don't really understand, it, and we call it the bystander effect. And it turns out putting these stem cells into damaged brain somehow, in ways we don't really fully understand, encourages the brain to repair itself a little bit better. Um, so th that. We don't really understand. If we could understand it better, maybe we could come up with a cleverer way of doing it. But but at the present moment, where it's a bit phenomenological, if you if you understand my meaning, it's, it's yeah. Like, and I mean, it, it seems like we're we're it, you know it, it, the research is is pretty far away, is it not? Um, so, but is it? Yeah, you know, we're getting someone asking about you know um, there there's stem cell therapies being advertised. I don't know if we're Alzheimer's, if that's the case, but, you know, where are we in terms of going to a doctor and saying, hey, I'd like to experiment with stem cell therapy. I, I'm taking it, you know, that's not anything we're going to do with our brains right now, but where, where is the whole um, industry right now? Well, it, it, it's, it, it's a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, so the first thing to say is that currently there are no licensed stem cell therapy for any brain disorders anywhere in the world. So in the UK, the US, Europe, Japan, nobody has licensed the stem cell therapy for the simple reason nobody's shown that one works. Now, there are stem cell clinics. There are a lot of them in, in the US that are somewhat fewer elsewhere because regulators don't like them, who are offering uh, cell therapies that are really untested. And you can recognize these clinics because, you know, if you go online, they'll put stem cells into you for any disorder you've got, right? You know, they don't care. <laughs> I mean, it can be brain disorders, it can be retina, it can be bone, it can be, you know, you name it, they'll do it. Those cell therapies do not work, right? They've never been tested. And I mean, you'll understand from what I was just saying that a lot of genuine companies are genuinely trying to get these cell therapies to work in clinical trials and falling flat on their face quite often, even despite their best efforts. I mean, bear this in mind, 90% of clinical trials fail. And that's clinical trials of conventional drugs by drug companies who know what they're doing. And yet, even then, 90% of them fail. So what do you suppose the chance with a stem cell therapy, we don't really understand how it works, we don't quite know how to manufacture it properly, we don't quite know what cells we, we, we really want, What's the chance of that just working? Just, you know, you put them into somebody's head and it, you know, and it works. The chance is almost zero. 
Uh, and these uh, companies who are selling these things online, they know that, which is why they're not going to clinical trial. I mean, would you go into clinical trial and risk a business where you can sell them to somebody for ten or twenty thousand dollars a go? Right? Yeah. Why risk your business? And and I mean, it's a scary thing because I I think a lot of people are looking for hope and a cure. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so it's that's a great thing to to warn people about. Absolutely. Don't yeah. go to these places that, you know, we have no proof that it works. Absolutely not. And the FDA in the United States are trying their hardest to, sh to shut this down, but it, it, it's, it is difficult to uh, control for various sort of uh, t technical and political reasons in the United States. Um, yeah. Well, um, uh, Professor Jack Price, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we wish you all the best with your research. We hope that it will lead to, um, you know, the holy grail of discovery. So, um, you know, we wish you all the luck. Um, we do appear, as you mentioned, to be quite far away, but it's an interesting concept to think about and not completely implausible. Yeah. Am I allowed to mention my book? Yeah, sure. Um, it, MIT Press. Can you see that? The Future yeah. of Brain Repair. It was published just this year, so uh, I think it's still pretty up to date. If, if any of your people we'll are, put, are interested, uh, yeah, we'll put a link to it. Is it on Amazon? Uh, it is. Yeah. And is it dealing with stem cell or what? what it's is dealing it? with exactly what we've been talking about today. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 you know the therapies and how far they are along and what the risks are and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, we'll post a link to the book. Um, thanks for sharing us uh, sharing that with us, and 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 thank you for your time. Um, when you do make the big discovery, make sure you come back and, and talk to us. I'd be very happy to. Let's hope so. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. It's not too long. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Price. Now, if you want to see more of that interview, um, please go to Being patient.com. Um, we will post these interviews, um, turn them into articles, and make sure you sign up for our newsletter. We're going to keep you abreast of upcoming talks. Thanks very much for joining us.